What do you like the most about yourself? What do I like the most about myself? I like a lot of things about myself. Okay, never mind. Next question. <laughs> I mean, I used to not like myself, but I'm very proud of myself. Born in America, raised in Indonesia, Chinese descent, and now I'm here again. I work in mostly in the gaming industry, in creative, everything that's related to art, illustration, all the things that you see online are the stuff that I do for any client that I work with. When I moved from America to Indonesia, I remember struggling with the language. My parents spoke mostly in English, and I didn't know Indonesian that much. And I went to this elementary school where I didn't understand a single word. I remember my teacher was telling me to to draw a tree, and she said like, "Hey, you should draw pohon," and pohon means tree and I just tried to understand I don't know with my superpower brain or something like that and couldn't do it <laughs> and I started crying by the way I really loved drawing when I was younger so like not being able to draw what my teacher told me to do it was just like devastating I was always struggling to sort of learn the language no matter where it is right like I didn't know Indonesian enough or I didn't know English enough and in Indonesia, I feel like there's more bullying that happened. Yeah, I grew up being bullied a lot. Only at the tail end of when I was in Indonesia, I kind of became the bully because I learned that if you're bullying someone, you're not bullied. But you know, like it didn't last long because I knew being a bully hurt other people so like I apologize to the person that I bullied after that I went to America I have to restart everything didn't really have a lot of friends so I tried to study as much as I can I mean it wasn't because I was smart it was because I was trying to constantly look for my parents attention and the only thing that made them happy was good grades so I studied a lot. I always bring the biggest books in my backpack and I remember like the popular girl in high school always like point and laugh at me. You know what's funny is that popular girl have a friend that eventually become my best friend. So when that popular girl, she just was making fun of me and laughing behind my back my best friend pushed her because she was like, why are you making fun of her kind of deal? She was my best friend for 18 years and then just recently, we're not the bestest as friends anymore because I was always very subservient and I didn't know much, right? The friendship sort of like was based on me not knowing much and her knowing a lot and when one day we become sort of equal, I think she couldn't fathom that I know more now, you know? <clears throat> and other polit political reasons as well, the way we think about things are just sort of exact opposite, where I don't want to kill our friendship because of politics, but she always loves to argue. Like she craves that debate and for her, it's a healthy thing, but for me, it becomes very tiring mm. and then after a while I just decided not to hang out as much with her anymore because at the moment it was killing my mental health I mean my mom and dad Good I love one. them so much and they took care of me but I am the second child and they took care of everyone else other than me more so I grew up sort of like feeling alone. I 
constantly compete for my parents with my own siblings for my parents attention you know like Chinese parents always very proud when they have the first child as a son so my older brother the first child they put a lot of their extra effort and money into him but not too long after I was born I have a younger sister so the attention sort of swap right away like instantly I sort of grew up with a lot of resentment to be honest I always feel like alone even though I know without them I wouldn't be here today I think it was when I was 30 years old I had a intervention I guess with my parents and talked to them and asked like why don't you ever take care of me as much as you take care of my other siblings and the reason why I asked that question was because my older brother he's still living with the parents and my parents was like hey can you help us to take care of him and for me after growing up just being so alone feeling neglected I just got really upset and asked like you never took care of me as much as you take care of him and you know what, <laughs> what my parents said to me was you never seem like you needed help Everyone else asked for help. Everyone else seemed like they needed more help than you. So because of that, we put our attention to others. But like, if you ever had asked for help, we'll definitely help you. And I was like, oh crap. Like, it's kind of like something that, that backfires because I was constantly competing for their attention. It's like, look at me, I'm better. I make better grades. I am independent. And then they're like, yeah, great, do that. So they always think that I'm super free spirit and they're very proud of me. It's just like, I grew up not knowing that at all. It's, I guess, you know, Asian, the typical stereotype Asian parents, they don't really tell how much they love you mm -hmm. or they don't communicate as much. It's really hard when you grow up so independent being vulnerable is tough you know they can take care of this by myself i'll do it so i never grew up talking to my parents that much so uh our our relationship is kind of unique because the damage is done like so if, if they ask me to be more communicative with them I cannot do that. I don't know how. I'm always there for every Father's Day, Mother's Day, everyone's birthday, Christmas, Thanksgiving. But when I'm around them, I just sit next to them silently. Like, this is how I show them that I love them. Like, I'm always here. So if you ever need anything, then you can ask me whenever you need to. I grew up trying to be independent and I could do so much that I feel like there's rarely any things to be insecure about. But when I am put next to someone, sometimes I feel insecurity, right? When someone is better than me in anything, but mostly work. I think I drown myself into work to manage my anxiety and depression. The only way for me to not think too much about anything is to drown myself with work. Work is a big part of my life. I think one thing at work that I know can be very distinctly makes me a little bit insecure is that because I'm always competing with males in my life, it's always me alone against five guys. The industry is number one. Number two, you rarely see female in like upper management. You don't really see a lot of women get up there because it's a huge struggle to go up there. So if you see a female in that position, trust me, like they have gone through so much crap to get there. So yes, there's me one against five or, or two against 10. And when I am put in that situation where I was emotionally triggered, for example, I always feel like, well, who am I? I'm just a female in the company that everyone thinks I'm just being emotional, being egoistic because I use my gender to get by. 
I do have privilege, I know that, right? Like as the only female in the company, there are certain things that I get by <laughs> and I'm not gonna deny that. But when there's like three men against me and there are way too many moments where I'm like, I just felt alone. And that's when my insecurity kicks in. Mm -hmm. And that's when I go to therapy. <laughs> reason why I go to therapy is because I know I'm going to be facing so many strong males and if I hate all the males that I work with, I'm screwed, mm -hmm. right? I have to see the good out of all of this. What do I like the most about myself? I like a lot of things about myself. Okay, never mind, next question. <laughs> I mean, I used to not like myself, but I'm very proud of myself. I'm not a stranger of hard work. I'm not smart. Like, I remember I was like sitting right next to this person that like seriously intake a lot of information in their head so quickly. They read a book in one day. I can't do that, right? But I surround myself with people like that. So then it's like sometimes insecurity come in, but you also at the same time like, well, you know what? I'm standing right next to these people that are actually super, super smart. I need to be proud of myself. So I like that about myself. I'm hardworking. I could take care of myself. If I need to go back to zero, I guess I can still bring myself back up. Well, still my you. worst fear. But if it had to happen, I know well, I'm educated enough to get myself somewhere again. When I was in Japan, you know, Japanese culture is very distinct. I worked there as a office lady, regular office lady, starting from the bottom. And what you do is like you never question your, your superior. You always listen to your manager. You always ask for permission. And so one day I have a client that's like from America that is not like that at all. So I have to work with this client and I was like, hey, can we do this? Can we do that? They'll be like unavailable to answer, but the event is starting soon or something. And then I just sort of like made a decision myself, but I felt so horrible because it's away from the Japanese culture. But I'm really good friends with the client. The client told me, you did a good thing. You need to understand that when I am not available, I will empower you to make a decision yourself because without that, a project will go nowhere. You need to understand that it's okay to make mistakes. And if you fail and if we fail, then we'll get better on the next try. So for me, that understanding is very foreign when you work in Japan. Mm -hmm. You're like, wait, I don't have to ask for permission. I have my own will to, to do something. Mm -hmm. Something in me like click and I become a different person. I want to say because of that person, I turn into like I can actually I can actually make decisions. And so I think from then on, there's a little ego in me, right? Like that people could see like, oh wow, you're a little different. Some hate it, some likes it. I think from that day, I have a very huge split of people who likes and hate me. I actually have a lot of people who don't really like me. I grew up wanting to make everyone happy. Right. And like realized that, you know, now, right? Like you can't make everyone happy. If, you, if everyone is happy with you, you're doing something wrong. The decision to go to Japan. Simple reason, I was bored. I was bored out of my mind. I had a lot of Japanese friends and a lot of my Japanese friends eventually go back to Japan. So I just sort of followed my heart. So I saved up $3,000 and then just went to Japan after college and, and went to Japan blind. And then I almost got deported because for six months I couldn't find a job. Because like in Japan, you can't stay longer than six months. In month six, Finally, I got a job in Japan. And so my goal in Japan was find a job in Japan that's not English teaching, be able to live there for three or five years and be able to live in Japan without the help of anyone. So understand the language enough that you can get by without asking people for help language-wise. Did you know Japanese? 
I studied Japanese for two years, so very, very little. But when I started work too, oh my God, it's the biggest struggle ever because like I was having a hard time even expressing my feelings. It was, it was a huge struggle. But I think after, at year four, all of a sudden everything clicks and I was like, oh wow, I can work. I can type and read business Japanese. But like the moment I hit that year five, my heart just kind of like, what is going on here? I am just antsy, anxious about like, do I stay? Like, what's going on? Do I leave? And I remember our friend, Phil. I was so just unsure about everything. I decided to take a flight to America for like about a week or two maximum and just trying to find myself. And I was in a bar. Phil was there and a couple of friends. And I was like, I don't know, what's my next step? And then Phil asked me a very good question. He said like, well, why did you go to Japan? And so I answered all of that. And then I was like, the reason why I'm like all anxious and unsure about this entire thing is because I accomplished every single goal that I've set five years ago. So now all I need to do is set up another goal. <clears throat> Either it's gonna be in Japan or America. Long story short, I decided to go to America because I knew absolutely nothing about America. <laughs> this is kind of weird because in Japan, people would be like, oh, Lily, what are good best practices and how to market a game in America? Mm -hmm. And I would struggle mm -hmm. other than just kind of like using my sense of visual and research. I knew absolutely nothing. So I decided to take the leap and go back to America. And when I decided to go back to America, I did not have a job. I even told my dad, I was like, pa, ma, I'm gonna go back to America. I have no savings and I might need to loan anything. I remember I just already shipped a bunch of like boxes back to America and I had zero money. And when I think not too long after I landed, I, I landed on a job. I feel like I was super lucky on getting that particular job too. I used to work in petrol advertising. Get back and I get to work and branding for a lot of gaming stuff but you know they also use my experience working in japan to work with bandai namco so it's like a win-win situation and that company's culture is not too far off from how i work mm -hmm. which is grinding <laughs> I, I quit that job in 2019 and then ever since then just sort of like freelance here and there I work with a lot of startups right now, but there's just one startup that I really wanted to make it happen. And that's my goal right now. So I can actually be in this world and have some sort of a mark, you know, a mark in this world where I can say, hey, I made this and a lot of people in the world know what it is. So that's my goal. Like I want to create something that people would be like, you were the founder of this game. That's amazing. Not necessarily Steve Jobs or Elon Musk, but you know, around that range, where it's not just like growing up, having a family, have kids and you're done. Like I, I wanna be someone.